Coming up on today's Locked On Senators. 24 hours later, it is still very cool that Vladimir Tarasenko has chosen to sign in Ottawa. So what are some realistic expectations from Tarasenko? That's what we're going to get into. And from a sniper to a disher, we have Stephen Halliday back on the show. He tells us all about playing in college, dev camp, and spending some time in Ottawa in the offseason. And did we just get a hint that Pierre Dorian isn't done? That's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you are listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 849 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcast. We're also free and available on YouTube, where yesterday we went live for over an hour after the news dropped that Vladimir Tarasenko was signing a one-year, $5 million contract with the Ottawa Senators. Today is Friday, July 28th, and before we get to over 20 minutes with one of our good friends, Stephen Halliday, Pilsy, has it sunk in yet? Yesterday, you told me that you weren't sure where Tarasenko should fit in this lineup. Now that you've slept on it, how are you feeling? Yeah, I've, I've jumbled the lines a little more and uh, played around, but I still feel like uh, where I've got Tarasenko is a great spot for him. And it's with all the excitement from Sens fans on Twitter and social media, it, it does truly feel real. It's on cap friendly. Everything's, everything's set up. He is an Ottawa Senator, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it, not going to lie. Ross, I was watching more of his highlights today, this time from his time uh, in St. Louis. And yeah, this this guy is an elite goal scorer. And one thing I picked up on that I love, I love so much, is when he's one-on-one with goalies, he consistently goes five-hole on them. I love seeing that. And I love it because as a goalie, I hate that. There's nothing worse than getting beat with just a clean five-hole shot. But as a player, that's a smooth, nice way to score goals. He's more of a goal scorer than I even gave him credit for. Same. I, mean, I know that like you know him as a guy who, who scores goals, right? He averaged about 35 for an extended period of time. But I didn't realize it was to the point where only five active players have more 30 goal seasons than Tarasenko. Wow. Okay, let's play a little trivia. Who are the five? Ovechkin. Yes. It's- Connor McTavish. So Tarasenko has six, right? More than five. Uh, or sorry, more than six uh, f- uh, 30 plus goal seasons, if I could speak English. I uh, guess how many Ovechkin has? 12. 17. <laughs> oh, damn yeah wow that's impressive yeah. okay ovechkin yep Connor mcdavid yep uh i wanna say the other three are all first overall picks there's your hint nathan mckinnon no patty kane no <laughs> uh austin matthews correct and i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it there i'm gonna cut it there Steven Stamkos mm. and Sidney Crosby. No, nah, I thought about saying Crosby. I should have, I should have went with that. Okay, nice. Exactly. When you ever, you're close. Don't, that's the kind of company that Vladimir Tarasenko keeps. And you, you look at that, you look at the history, but last season, a little bit of a down year, 50 points in 69 games split between two teams had, had a bit of injury trouble in there as well. What is your realistic expectation for points for Vladimir Tarasenko? He's going to be motivated. One year deal. I, I I think he hits thirty goals. Uh, so let's let's just go with thirty. Uh, thirty goals. I'm going to say thirty five assists. I was going to say thirty five. Sixty five points would be a perfectly fair yeah contribution. Now it came out today through Andy Strickland, who we know has. Yeah, a- I was hoping we were going to get into this. Yeah. 
ear to the street in St. Louis where Tarasenko spent so much of his career so far. I, by the way, I've reached out to a few St. Louis uh, people. See if we can get nice. uh, former Senator Jamie Rivers uh, could be a Ooh. guest coming up on locked on centers. Maybe Cam Jansen. We could have him on uh, to discuss, but when you look at the, the reasons behind Vladimir Tarasenko firing his agent, it certainly makes a little more sense now that Ottawa had offered four seasons at $5.5 million on July 1st. He ends up signing one year, 5 million. That is an absolute bombshell. Like that shocked me. And just for completeness sake to finish off Strickland's tweet, he also says uh, he had one year offer from Carolina at 5.25 and one year in San Jose at 6 million. So the senators, they get the shortest term and the least dollar amount deal done. And, we can have a discussion here, Ross, but I think both, I, I'm going to assume both of us are on the same page. I am much more relieved that they went one year, five million. I don't know about you. I would have been punching air if they gave him four years term. That's the thing. You cannot like that's that's such a classic free agent, free agency deal, right? Like I think really the Sens probably want him for two, maybe three years, but you throw in that fourth just to sweeten the pot and 5.5, like, I feel like the first two years, that would be a great deal for the Sens. And the last two years, it's a great deal for Tarasenko or they're trying to find their way out of that, just especially if, unfortunately, the shoulder injuries keep popping up uh, for him. So I I love that he's here one year, five million. That's awesome. You know what I don't love? He couldn't get one more goal in 2016-17. Because then we could have just said, yeah, we got a two-time 40 goal score. Have we ever said that on this show before? That would have been nice. That would have been nice. But hey, Ross, two-time 40 goal scorers can be overrated. They can. They can. <laughs> Damn, posting in on that chirp. So, hey, with that said, Vladimir Tarasenko, he can fit up and down the lineup. I don't think that you have to set it in stone right now. But the way it's constructed... It almost feels like duos is going to be the thing, which was under Guy Boucher, it felt like more, where you have duos and then just fill in a third guy on a line. Under DJ Smith, it's been more trios. You know, I guess to an extent, he had Norris and Kachuk attached at the hip, to be fair, but now we've seen what happened when they aren't. I mean, Timmy was obviously a great fit with Brady as well, but I think the duos are the way to go. So it's, I think I would almost build the lineup backwards and say, who do I want to play with Pinto at the third line? And then who would, who do I want to play with Norris? Who do I want to play with Stutzla like that? And then that's how I figure out where Tarasenko is going to play. So I've said where I think he's going to go. I, I love the idea of having a line of Brady, Timmy, and Tarasenko. Whether you call that your top line or not, I, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. But where have you landed on as a spot for Tarasenko to play? No, I, I think that I'm starting to warm up to that idea. I've also yeah. seen a lot of people throw out the idea that you move Claude Giroux to left wing where he played in Philadelphia at times. Uh, I I didn't fact check this, but that he had his most productive season. The one where he hit a hundred points at left wing. Cause Voracek would have been his right winger, I guess on, on that yep. line. Or no, sorry. Wayne Simmons would have been Ooh, uh, true. the right winger on that line. Maybe Couturier. I'm not quite familiar who the centerman would have been for, for that trio. But when you, when you put that in a, in a, in a bubble, now, all of a sudden, do you just put Batherson back up to be that that Norris, Kachuk, Batherson line? And then Stutzla with Giroux and Tarasenko? I think you could be cooking with fire with that line as well. Yeah, that certainly um, opens up a lot more options. And I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, that's something that I completely overlooked. I kind of viewed Giroux as a center or a right winger. Uh, so having him move to the left side would be huge. And honestly, Ross, that's what I would prefer. Uh, I would prefer to have Brady Norris Batherson and Giroux Stutzla Tarasenko. Like, I think that lines up a lot better. And then uh, I would leave Kubalik on the third line with Pinto and, you know, pick your pick your player there as well. Yeah, exactly. Igor Sokolov, possibly. Um, but yeah, maybe, th- maybe too many shooters on that line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of shooters. Um, but I really think that would be a good move. But when was the last time? What like was Giroux playing left wing in Philly recently? I'm I I can't be sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. There will be a few people in the comments who will let us know. So we'll have that for you next week. We're also gonna have Mark Mathod on hopefully uh, next week to discuss obviously the players' perspective about bringing in Vladimir Tarasenko. I think it's gonna be an important conversation to have with him. And man, 
There's also the questions, though, because right now Ottawa has about $800,000 in cap space with two players to sign, including Shane Pinto, who we keep seeing comparables being thrown out in the $2.5 million range. So what could happen? And does Pierre Dorian already kind of know what could happen? I'll give you a little hint at why I think that there's going to be a move sooner rather than later. But that's coming up after our interview with Stephen Halliday. I think you'll all enjoy this. Just a great guy. Yeah, Halliday has been uh, been a prospect that when he was drafted, uh, you're like, oh, there, there's some nice value here. Like this guy could be a player. And then another year goes by and you're like, oh, damn, he took a big step. And then another year goes by and you're like, this kid is legit. Uh, and uh, he's got a great personality as well. So we always love catching up with Stephen Halliday. That's coming up next. You're listening to Locked on Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Athletic Greens. Guys, when I'm trying to stay healthy, the key for me is a simple way to have a good routine and good healthy habits. I'm a simple guy. And what could be more simple than just one scoop of AG1 in my cup of water every morning? Ross is on the AG1 kick as well. I can honestly say I feel better when I have my AG1 in the morning, there's a noticeable difference. And why wouldn't there be? Because with one delicious scoop of AG1 in your water, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and more. And that special ingredients blend helps your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and your aging. So it kind of hits all over the map when it comes to a healthy lifestyle. And it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. So check it out today. Reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do, it's simple. Go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance from Athletic Greens. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You know we love our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. You can find it in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. And when you go there, just let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. Glebe Central Pub is a great place to go, whether it's for a pint, for lunch, for dinner, for drinks, or to heading out at one of their great events. They've got live music. Go check out their schedule on their website, Glebe Central Pub, and on Instagram, Glebe Central Pub. So, not only all those things I mentioned, they've got battle bot nights, they've got all sorts of interactive trivia events, but they also are so close to lands down, you could hit it with a football. And when the Red Blacks are playing, have your pre there, head there after the game. It's just perfectly located right in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. You know we're going to be there sooner rather than later. You know the Send Shuttle's coming back, so get ready for it. Go say hi to the Glebe Central Pub and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. There are friends in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. Go check them out. It is the Glebe Central Pub. All right, now let's get to our interview with top Senators prospect. Here is Stephen Halliday. All right, we are now very pleased to be joined by a three-time recurring guest, Ohio State forward Senators draft pick Stephen Halliday, live from a rink in Maryland. Safe to call you a uh, rat rink there, Stephen? Oh, yeah, rink rat or whatnot, but yeah, I like to I like to go on the ice, so uh, yeah, it was, it's fitting that uh, I'm doing it at a rink. Yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, we uh, we got to see you a little bit at uh, Dev Camp. How was that whole experience like for you? Oh, it was really good, um, catching up with like some guys and stuff, but I was there for a month, so I got a lot of good training um, in Dev Camp. I kind of got to show uh, what the training I've been doing down with, uh, like, I think I, I was living with Igor. I know you guys know Igor really well, so. Oh, yeah. I did was been training with Igor, Tyler and, and Jory, so did some did some great work for the month, so I was excited that I got to show it off at Dev Camp. Yeah, and uh, we asked uh, everyone we talked to at Dev Camp, we asked this question, who impressed you the most at Dev Camp? And uh, before I get your answer, overwhelmingly people's answer was Stephen Halliday. So just so you know that uh, you definitely look sharp out there and it wasn't just us saying that. So I'll ask you the question now. Who, who impressed you the most at Dev Camp? Was there a couple guys where you're like, oh, damn, like I didn't realize this guy could shoot it like this or this guy had this hands or this speed or something like that? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I got uh, I got to close like obviously like Clav was really good. Um, I loved Boosh's game. I, I, was, I was pretty bummed Boosh didn't get to play in the three on three because uh, we've been doing like some stuff kind of with his shoulder and stuff. They didn't want to get him into contact, but I know for the month that he's been grinding, um, he looks really good. I'd I'd be really excited for him at Belleville and and the guy who actually got hurt in testing Jory and like he he he's having he's gonna have a sick year. I thought he was like really good in that month like we did battles and like like he was stopping me all the time like really hard to get around i think he's gonna have a really good year and um in the ohl i think he's gonna be a really good player yeah he even got that little taste of, of the ahl at the end of last season so we're, we're excited for that but i want to go back to the first name you mentioned tyler clevin and, and he was the most experienced nhl player at that dev camp seven nhl games like was it just a kind of a poise or a presence that he has on the ice or was it one thing in particular that stood out yeah, I, I've known Clef, um, like played against him a lot, like in the USHL and stuff. And I know you guys call him the K train for a reason. You know, I'm not, I'm not really uh, looking down at the puck on him on his side too much. But yeah, no, it was, it was. I thought like just his presence and like I know he, uh, a lot of the college guys hung out together. I know like Bavaro was there. Um, O'Neal, I know really well. He skates yep. me in, in Maryland and. Um, Pfizer, um, Ostapchuk, Bush, me, Jordan, we all kind of went out for dinner all the time that uh, during uh, Def Camp. And I know Club like gave us really good tips and stuff with NHL and like gave us some good insights on like how cool it was. And, and he went to world championships too. So we got to see like the, how those NHLers play. So definitely like, even though he's the same age as you, like just trying to pick stuff, pick stuff up he was relaying and, and kind of trying to learn, learn, learn a lot. That's awesome. Just quickly uh, on that note, I asked him if there's any beef between you two because he committed from North Dakota. He says you're all good, though. He's, he's, he's oh, good. yeah. We sat together in the locker room. So, yeah, he, he's giving it to me the first day. But, um, yeah, he's, really good. he's a really good guy. I think that's one of the things I like most about Dev Camp is you get all of these guys that are in similar ages, but – even though you're the same age, like you have different experiences, like you mentioned, Clevin with um, World Juniors, World Championship, NHL, college, and then you get the junior guys. Like, and, and you all get to come together and kind of share tricks of the trade. Like, hey, this is what we did here. This is what we did here. My coach uh, says this. Like, was there any kind of like interesting, like, you know, tips or tricks or, or new drills or stuff that you did at Dev Camp that you, you hadn't really done before? Yeah, I mean, like, the pace of play was, like, really good. I thought, like, all the drills, I mean, kind of just – the drills weren't too complicated. Otherwise, you know, maybe they would have been a mess. But yeah. um, you definitely had to pay attention. I think that was the one thing that – I think I messed up on drills. So, I was, like – It was it, high energy out yeah. there. Like, they, they yeah. were working, you guys. Yeah, no, I, I know Dono and Winch and um, and those guys, Wade, were, they're all, like, um, doing a really good job with us in the month I was there, too. So, I kind of had a little bit of a leg up, but yeah. – um, I would say that that definitely like learned a lot of like stuff off the ice too, as much as we learned on the ice. Who was the toughest goalie to beat? Levy's really good. I had his number in the shootout, but he was really good at everywhere. Like, but that's player. huge to say though, Stephen, because uh, Marylinen he's known for being able to stop guys one on one. Like his shootout numbers and penalty shot numbers are incredible. So that's a nice tip, uh, a feather in your cap to have there. Yeah, I mean, also, like, I, there was probably, like, six guys shooting. Like, he was kind of getting – I feel like can't, – can't, can't, he was getting bagged, too. So, I mean, I'm, I was lucky to score on him. Looking out for the tendies. I like that. Good guy. Yeah, great guy. That's awesome. Hey, were you uh, were you one of the guys who knew who Brian McGratton was before Dev Camp? Uh, pardon? We were talking to uh, Dave Bell, the coach for the oh. Belleville Sens, and he said that uh, – a lot of the guys in his group didn't know who Brian McGratton was because he was there talking to you guys as well. No, yeah. No, I mean, I, I can't say we were, like, super familiar, like, jumping out of the page, but um, me, me, Jorian, and Boosh were watching his fights after, and we were like, holy crap, this guy, like, <laughs> he, like, we watched this one versus Ryan Reeves, and he was, like, ragdolling this guy, and, and we were, we were like, we were in shock, like, how crazy it was. Like, we're not... We're like, yeah, I'm not going to look look directly in his eyes. <laughs> it's just probably a little bit before your time because that's who, like, we grew up. He was, like, the guy. Ottawa couldn't get past Toronto. We know you hate the Leafs. We love that growing up. But when Ottawa was in the playoffs with, with Toronto, they kind of bullied the Senators. Senators were, like, the more talented team, more skill, and they would just get in the trenches. So right after the lockout, Brian McGratton, after 550 penalty minutes in the AHL during the lockout, 
550. Do you have 550 in your career in, in like the last five years? So he, he comes in and he punches Domi in the nose, breaks his, breaks his nose. That's another good fight to watch. And after that, it just kind of changed the momentum. But yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be someone who's challenging McGratton in that room. What was his, uh, what was his um, seminar or lecture about? Yeah, no, it was really good. Like he just kind of relayed his experiences, like how hard it was for him to make it. And, and, you know, um, you don't always have to, you know, put up like these crazy numbers. You just kind of just got to do what your team needs you to do. And, and I think that was his message. And, and I think also like just making sure you're staying level headed, you know, um, not getting not getting astray from the path that, you, that got you there. So I think he had a lot of great stuff to say. And, and I know him and Wade played on the same team. So they were giving it to each other during the seven hours. It's just funny to see how like their relationship still like really good. That's yeah, awesome. two two very different players, Wade <laughs> Wade Redden and Brian McGrath, and that's for sure. Um, now, I, I want to talk to you about uh, your experience uh, in college hockey. Uh, you had your your first season with Ohio State University, and you put up some pretty big numbers over a point per game. And I can oh, confirm, assist? I can confirm, Stephen Halliday is a disher. Uh, I definitely can confirm that with thirty two assists in forty games, but. Uh, just tell us a bit about the program over in Ohio State. Like, what what uh, what are some of the things that you liked about it and uh, and thought after your first season? Yeah, no, I thought um, I thought we we did a lot of good things, like playing the right way. You know, I think like I think the college games a little bit, like in even in dev camp, like you go against the CHLers and and in the three on three, maybe they're going one on one on couple. And if I did that in college, like you're giving the puck back to Logan Cooley or you're giving it to yeah. Fink. You know, so I think like I think it's a little bit. It is really good for preparing me for like pro game. So yeah, I think that good structure. Yeah, I think like Coach Roll like fits Bittner, and then we got a couple new coaches um, coming in. But I think uh, that's probably the biggest thing is, and and I think also like they just gave me a chance to play. You know, they 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 gave me a chance to you know do what I what I can do, and I think that that was really big for me too. And and this year I'm 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 hoping we're gonna have a really good year too. And I think um, you know. We got 16 new guys, but I think that um, we got the right guys. So I'm hoping we can have a good good year there. But I think the development was good too. Um, always high paced practices. Um, I credit like my line mates I have in the past, like really really great guys, Davis and then Tate's obviously playing on the Marley. So you might see him a couple times with Belleville. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he doesn't score too many goals against Belleville. But um, yeah, but I think you guys. I don't know if uh, the Marleys are in the prospect tournament versus versus Sens, but I think he's going to that for the Leafs, so I might have to turn on a Leaf game for once. Nice, yeah, exactly. Cheer for the player, not the team. That's the- <laughs> Cheer for the player, not the team, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, hey, we might have to start calling you the Ohio State Sens because Theo Wahlberg's going to yes. join you there. Do you yeah. have a relationship already with him? Yeah, no, I talked to him a little bit at Dev Camp. Um, you know, he's going to be a freshman, so I'm ho- hoping to, like, you know, help him out whenever he needs it or stuff like that, and, um, you know, I, I think he's going to do really well for us. I think the coaches are going to do turn him into a really good player and I think he's already a good player obviously but I think he's gonna have a really good year and so I'm excited so what about uh what about the message from the coaches in Ottawa to you what was it as you left and what they want you to work on the rest of summer and into next season yeah no I think they just kind of like stay on the right same path I've been doing like some little little things that I need to clean up uh but I think just getting faster you know um keep keep being being a pro away from the rink too um you know I, jeremy's I, I don't know if you guys know jeremy but jeremy's like really a good guy for me i always like have questions he always answers them and then obviously like continuing with my development with sean and winchy i think they're going to come down a little bit more since um tyson dixon wisconsin and then theo obviously on osu so hopefully they'll get down to a couple more big 10 games but uh yeah like just kind of keep keep doing what i've been doing and, and I should be doing okay. Yeah, no, you got to spend a bunch of time in Ottawa. Uh, we know you were living with uh, our guy Igor for quite a bit. Um, is that the most time you've spent in Ottawa? I spent two weeks last week plus dev camp, so close to a month. But okay. I would say this was like a month straight. It was really nice. cool. I, had my, I drove down, so I had a car. Um, yeah, so it was really. I thought it was really fun. What's uh, What was your favorite thing to do away from the rink? Uh, yeah, no... Uh, we went to Jorian's farm for one day. Oh, I let Petey live with us a little bit too at the end of it. Petey. Oh, nice. He was my roommate at that camp too. He's a really good guy. He's cool. gonna have a sick year. Yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna have to turn on to shoot summer show summer showcase. I think it might even be the, be the next week. Next weekend. Next yeah. weekend. Yeah. 
I, I bet you he, he lights it up. He's sick. He's um, a shooter, eh? Yeah, sick shot. Yo, he was telling us that he wants to be like a Patrick Hornquist. I love that player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's sick. I, I think his edges are really good, too. Like, the sweep, do all those drills. Like, just learning from uh, watching, like, his edge work and stuff. Definitely really, really sick player. And he's a great guy, too. So, But I would say away from the rink, um, I, I, there's a lot of stuff to do. I, I would say we kind of hit the malls. We hit a couple of the malls. The outlet malls are crazy because the USD is like even cheaper, and then the US mall, yeah. is like, it's really nice, uh, really nice like that. But <laughs> we played uh, pickleball every day. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I actually spent a lot of time at the rink because I knew once I left, I was gonna like wish I spent more time at the rink there. But yeah, like <laughs> as he says, from inside a rink, this guy loves yeah. being at the rink. No, but though they had like a sick <laughs> shooting room. I know, like. Like, they had, like, everything you could ever imagine. They had, like, hot tub, cold tub, sauna. Like, the Euros in the sauna, man. I can't yeah. tell. They're, like, we're, like, dying. Me and Petey were dying there. Igor, you got to ask Igor, like, how he does it. This guy is <laughs> unreal at the sauna. But <laughs> me and Petey were out here dying. <laughs> you should put that on his bio, eh, on, on Insta. Master of the sauna. Yeah. Master of the sauna. Who's cooking in that house with all you animals? Igor was pretty – Igor's a really good cook. And, nice. um – Petey's, Petey's pretty good too. Is Igor just slapping meat on the grill, or is he actually like? We actually the first one of the first days I was there. And this is a funny story, actually. One of the first days I was there, me and I have a friend that lives in Ottawa. He's uh he works for like the sixty sevens, I think this year. He's doing like graphic design. His name's Nate, but cool. I hung out with him a decent amount. He's a good, great guy. But um, I bought some steaks from there's like all these different grocery stores. I have no idea what their names are. I think it's like No Frills or something. Yeah. yeah. And I bought like these steaks, and and I'm, I get home. I'm like, Igor, like, is there a grill? And he's like, he's like, oh, like, let's look. Like, we're looking for a grill. There's no grill. So like, I'm like knocking on the neighbor's door, like, hey, like, can I borrow your grill? Like, <laughs> but I ended up cooking steaks in like our neighbor's backyard with my nice. buddy just to like. And so there wasn't any grill, but yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, that was a good story. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Hey, you got it. I'm sure that's a great story for them too. It's yeah, no, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Oh, that's awesome. We we had a near uh, catastrophic moment at Dev Camp because we were set up. You guys get ready at the CTC, but then drive over yeah. uh, to the Sensplex. And Hoyt Stanley thought he missed his uh, his shuttle, so he's standing out there in full gear, just like the the face where it's like your first day as a freshman and you don't know where your class is. You don't want to be late. That yeah, yeah. Type of vibe. So uh, Martian like ran over and was like, "Hey, like, do you need a lift?" <laughs> he, he, so the shuttle came like as they're walking the car, but he was able to get. So glad you were able to get the steaks on the grill there too. How's Igor doing? He looks good on the ice. Yeah, really good. I'm excited for him. You know, um, he's putting in the work this summer, so that's all I can like I can say. He's putting in the work, so I think he has the skill to play. So it's up to him. You know, another shooter too, eh? Yeah, he, yeah. That's one thing. Like um, we did, we did some like stuff with. Uh, with like a skills coach his name's pat Moy, and yep. um you know like igor's cooking us and shooting and i'm like, I'm like damn like, i need to watch this guy more he's sick and tight shot like just like really good at scoring like some people just have a knack for it and i'm trying to score more goals next year so he was a perfect guy to just watch and practice you know how he releases it or like his patience you know in and around the net and stuff you can't teach so what kind of uh what kind of guys are you watching in the nhl um to kind of model your game after yeah, um, I would, I, I watch a lot of different guys. Like obviously, like Matthews because he's a bigger guy. Um, I've been watching a lot. Like I'm friends with Kent Johnson, so I've actually nice. watched a lot of his. I watched almost every one of his games, and now and obviously like he's a different player than I am, but I could try to do some of the stuff he does because he's really good at carving up the neutral zone and stuff. So I've actually watched him a lot, and and then I obviously try to go to a lot of Jackets games too. So um, probably those guys, and I think I just kind of watch all the highlights from games before, you know, like see what everyone's doing, like what new moves they're doing or how certain players play. But um, they had a good uh, seminar about like goal scoring and stuff at, uh, at Dev Camp. So that was pretty interesting to see. Like, I think like all the goals, like 50% were like in and around the paint, which is like, you wouldn't really think that because you just see all these kids like toe drag in and sniping from like tops of the circles. But yeah, it was definitely uh, those two guys for sure. They just put on Brady Kachuk's goal reel, and it's like all within five feet of the net. Just yeah, but those are the hardest goals to score, I think. Sometimes because yeah. like everyone's around, and you know, oh, I've watched it all at Tim too. He's actually like there's like an hour and a half long YouTube video of like every one of his plays on like yep. I think Crazy. I've watched it like three times. 
It's crazy. What was the most impressive part of, uh, of Timmy's game? He's just so like he's so creative. Like that's what the all like the really good players are. I think these days are just like they're so creative and and like he's so fast. Obviously, like I'm, you'd cook me and race at any time of the day. Or, but um, he trying to like do some of his moves or like obviously like he can skate through the neutral zone really well. So trying to trying to like do that as a center too. Dude, how about the backhand feed against LA in overtime? Where he oh, goes to, to Claude? To, uh, to, yeah. yeah. Sick, yeah. with the far blue line like he, yeah he has it on a string it's it's crazy man the edges and the hands is is wild combo oh yeah that's that's timmy we love him uh final question for me here steven and thanks thanks for joining us um at the rink i love it that's such a hockey guy vibe um you mentioned that uh before that you're a big tennis guy and you're playing pickleball uh what are, are you getting up to uh, a lot of that this summer? And um, with the pickleball, you you got to be pretty good at that as a as a tennis guy as well, eh? Are you picking that up pretty easily? Yeah, like we played pickleball. Jo- me and Jorian would go back and forth. Like we play every day, and then Boosh would come in, and Boosh would, I Jorian would beat me, and then Boosh would beat Jorian. I feel like Boosh would be an aggressive player. Yeah. Like he's not no, playing he, defense; he's like at the he net. Ball, yeah, he yeah. Has ball. The best is like when we all just get, start get going and it gets really competitive and stuff. But we all played – we us three played pickleball all the time. And so, like, that was, like, kind of how I got into pickleball. I wasn't the greatest because, like, it's different racket. But I, right. I got better as it went on. But I've been taking tennis lessons since I went back. Nice. And then um, – there's a there's like a tennis tournament next week that my uh, that I'm gonna go watch like one of the Ohio State guys is playing in it so I'm Sweet. pretty excited for that and um, then when I, I'm going to Toronto later in August and I'm gonna uh, go to the National Bank Open too so I'm excited. Nice, nice. that's always a good time. Hey, uh, I have two final questions. First one, I know that you're you're like half and half right canadian and american if you ever play international who would you be representing oh uh i don't know like i played for canada um u17 but i think i've like played most of my hockey in the u.s so i probably lean towards the u.s all right okay okay american so then that leads me into my final question u.s open coming up in a month the final grand slam of the tennis season who's who's gonna win who do you have jj wolf (laughs) that sounds like a buddy (laughs) <laughs> that's I'm the Ohio State for... guy, isn't he, it? He's dark horse, dark horse. Okay. <laughs> nice. dark horse. okay, all right. Uh I like that. JJ Wolf, you said? Yep, yeah. All right. I think he's like 46 in the world right now, but all right, you'll get an yeah. invoice if that doesn't uh... get for me at FanDuel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you'll get the invoice there. Uh Steven, really appreciate your time, man. You're a true friend of the show, man. Three time recurring guest now, and we can't wait to see your uh, growth continue at Ohio State. We'll check in with you during the season as well, man. Enjoy the rest of your summer and thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks, guys. Anytime. Stick taps to Steven for joining us. Really fun conversation. And Pilsy, I think we have to get this hashtag going this season. Hashtag Hobie Halliday. I like it. Yeah, I'm a big alliteration guy. So Hobie Halliday, the double H there, that rings uh, rings nicely on the old Twitter mobile. I'm going to be excited because if this season goes as planned for Stephen Halliday, he could be one of those guys where we're excited when the season ends in college hockey because maybe he gets a little taste at the end of the year, whether it's in the minors with Belleville, maybe making a Calder Cup push, Ooh. or maybe gets a game or two. I think if he gets a game into an, in Ottawa, maybe that means that Ottawa's not in the position that we expect no excuses to be in but uh we're really excited to track Stephen Halliday's performance at Ohio State and like I mentioned in the interview Theo Wahlberg also there so we'll be able to have a double dip of Sens coverage so our friend Sens prospects Henry will be all over that over throughout the season okay speaking of what's next that's all I put for the little third segment note because what is next for the Ottawa Senators something something so I asked the Sens PR team today, I just said, hey, uh, obviously we'd love to have Pierre back on the show. I know our schedules are so busy right now. I didn't want to like formally ask. I was more so just saying like, can we expect Pierre to be speaking to the media soon? Because I wanted to kind of plan either today's show around it or on Monday so that we can kind of have a sense because we like reacting after Pierre talks, being able to discuss what he said. I was told nothing is planned right now, but it could change in an instant. And to me, he said they're leaving it at what Pierre said in the quote where he said, you know, Tarasenko is a natural goal scorer. To me, if you're making a $5 million signing, usually if you're a GM, you want to do a bit of a victory lap in the media. I'm just saying. 
Yeah, I mean, especially when it's arguably the top free agent available. And like we saw from Andy Strickland's tweet, you beat out a bunch of other teams with lower a lower offer. Like that's that's something that, uh, you know, nothing wrong with tooting your own horn on a good signing like that. So, yeah, I, I think definitely that there's that's a sign that he's not done. But also I think it's pretty clear he's not done because there there's some work that still needs to be tidied up here on that cat friendly page. If it's on my wedding day, I'm going to be so mad at Pierre. It's going to be like karma for doing the chicken signing or the trade, the chicken trade um, when we got to Cabo. That's yeah, karma. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I'm sure Rachel won't mind if we step away from the ceremony to do a quick live reaction. Yeah. At the altar. Hey, yeah. just hey, mic me up. Marsh can bring the phones. <laughs> uh, time for your vows. Holy smoke. Shane Pinto, long term deal. <laughs> A big move got rid of a couple of guys with salary. Uh, yeah. no, it, it is going to be, it's made the rest of the summer very interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. That man, I, I've said it a million times, but never a dull day in Sens land. Like they just, it keeps, it keeps churning and uh, it's a great team to cover on uh, a regular basis. That's for sure. And it's a great fan base to have the because- best fan base, the best. We literally would not be able to do this without you. All the immediate reaction comments that are rolling in, the comments yeah. mean a lot to us. They do help the algorithm quite a bit. The goal is 10,000 subscribers. And I, it's not us getting to 10,000 subscribers. It's all of us getting there. So it's a team effort. We really appreciate everyone. We, we're planning already the uh, the home opener, which, I mean, last year I said there's never been a more anticipated home opener. I don't know if there's been a more anticipated home opener than the next one. Yeah. I, I agree. It's gonna be it's gonna be electric. I'm so excited. How many home games did Jacob Chickren end up playing for Ottawa? Not many. I'm gonna say five, four. I think less. I want to say it was just that like that quick little in and out. He played uh, three home games and then got hurt. I guess he did play 18 minutes the game he got hurt. Remember, it was like a slew foot that took him out. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he played less than four full home games. Damn. Out of his 12 games in Ottawa. So he played uh, played eight on the road. Math guy. Nice. Heck yeah. Including the game in Chicago. Otherwise, I thought he had a pretty good showing. As a, Absolutely. As a little bit as, a, as an Ottawa senator. Now, four of his five points came in two games. But there was also a pretty cool thing just to wrap up with uh, with Jacob Chicker. And they did a behind the scenes. So if you haven't seen that, go over to the Send social media and you can find that. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me are just bask in the excitement of uh, bringing in a guy like Tarasenko uh, on on a low risk deal. And the actually, no, I, I do have a different final thought. So the one thing nobody really touched on, and I'm not saying it's a big deal or not, but the no trade clause for Vladimir Tarasenko, I I think that's that's a good thing, and you know, he should get a no, no trade clause, like at the very least sweet in the pot like that. But where, where I'm going with this is I was looking at the cap friendly page and what is the difference between a no trade clause and a no move clause? No move clause. You can't be assigned to the minors. Oh, okay. So get your 91 Belleville Senator Tarasenko jerseys ready. I guess uh, that could happen. Trade your Zaitsev ones in for them. Yeah. Good call. Okay. Yeah. That's, that was one thing I was looking at and that's, that's that's another sign that the senators are serious about winning because what they could have done is sign him to a one-year deal and been like, ah, eh, you know, if we're not really in a playoff position, we'll ship you off to a contender for for picks. But they were like, no, that's not even that's not even a remotely what we're thinking about doing here. We're like we're keeping you all the way here. Or we're going for a big push here. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that quickly. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. My final thoughts are uh, shout out Dylan Ferguson signing in the KHL. Yes. Yeah. That's I, you know, it's too bad. He didn't get a different opportunity uh, in the NHL or at least uh, the AHL, but I'm sure he's making some decent money. That's what I was going to say. Like get the bag when you can. And uh, I'm sure he got a, like to, to go over there. Uh, I'm sure the money was uh, enticing and he got himself a good opportunity. So good on him. He'll be in Dynamo Minsk, which is actually not in Russia. If I'm, it is in, it's the capital of Belarus. Okay. The more, yeah. you know. and that was talking KHL hockey, <laughs> Eastern European geography. We're going to have a discussion, by the way, you mentioned free agent signings. We're going to do something new next week, bonus content. You know, we couldn't help ourselves. We're, 
should we explain Monday? We'll explain Monday. Let's but explain Monday. Coming, but free agents is going to have to do with the first one. I think people are really going to enjoy that. That's next week on Locked on Senators. Oh. Have a great weekend, everyone. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked on Senators podcast. It's your team every day. <laughs>